I understand. You've been playing board games. And they were fine playing your collection without worrying about adding any new titles. And you didn't need a friend like me. But now you come to me and you say, Board Game Inquisition, give me reviews. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Inquisitor. Instead, you come onto my channel on the day of this Kickstarter preview and you ask me to tell you five things about with a smile and a gun. With a smile and a gun, has you take on the role of a prohibition era mobster vying for control of the underworld. You roll dice at the start of the turn, choosing one for movement, distributing your influence tokens, and one to perform an action. Keeping an eye on the police and the shadow who varies from game to game. After three turns, you determine who controls what areas and share the spoils. The winner is the person with the most mob strength from victory points and items after three rounds. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, as you may or may not have noticed from this game's title, um, which is part of a quote, um, and it goes famously from Al Capone that you can get far in life with a smile, but you can get further with a smile and a gun. So this is a mobster themed game, one in which is set in kind of a 1920s prohibition era city, and you are trying to gain mob supremacy over a rival mobster and maybe the police um, to be in charge of all these areas of the map. Um, now, mobster games actually as a whole, you don't come across them that often, do you? There have been a couple, but nothing quite like this. This feels more like an abstract kind of strategy game to me. Now, despite that, there is a ton of effort made with the theme here, and it is lovingly applied. And you see this in kind of the art, the font choices, and especially like the naming of the different things. So that the game becomes less about moving your cubes around and more about kind of getting stuck into the meat of defeating your opponent. Now, similar games to this one, um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is Las Vegas, as it is also a dice rolling game where you attempt to control different areas of the map. Although I feel like this one is definitely like a little bit of a step up from Las Vegas, as so you have to contend with all those influence cubes. Thing two, mechanics. So there are two things you have to worry about in this game, and they're rolling dice and taking names. No, I don't actually mean taking names. They're area control, of course. Um, and what you're going to do on your turn is you're going to choose a dice from the selection that has been rolled, and that will determine how far you get to move around the board. And once you finish moving, you get to place these influence tokens. And of course, this is the meat of the game. Um, and interestingly enough, you get to place three on the space closest to you, then it goes two, and then one as your influence kind of wanes as it moves further away from you. And I think this is a really interesting mechanic because it shows that you don't always have to be first in each zone to win something that's worthwhile. So trying to navigate not only where you've got the most cubes, but where you've got like second or maybe even third cubes in some places is actually a really important decision. Now, the other part of your turn is you get to choose another dice and based on the pip on it, you get to perform a specific action. And these all seem to be related to taking cubes on or off of the board. Um, I do find it to almost feel a little extraneous after spending so long working out where you're putting your own cubes. Um, but I do think it's a nice touch that you get a little bit of extra control um, after you deal with just kind of the dice rolls. Um, there's also the addition here of the shadow um, component. So like the little meeple who does something different each time you play um, and then there are infusion cards as well which allow you sometimes to alter kind of the game state and these differ every time you play there's a little stack of them to play with and I think they add a lot of kind of variety and a little bit of extra something something to the game every time you play so that it doesn't feel too samey but that is kind of the nature of abstract strategy games right um, as a whole I think this game is actually mechanically very robust it's very well put together it's not the most complicated thing you're ever going to play and it's not going to offer offer you the most taxing decisions but there are enough there to make the game pretty interesting and pretty fun too. Thing three on the table. So I know this is going to sound a little bit weird but I really love the fact that this game board is actually a square. Um, it fits really tidily onto the table and then there's loads of space to put all the bits and bobs around the side of it. It's kind of satisfying. Not only that, the board is black and white, so it definitely stands out and it's something that you might spot from across a room if someone else was playing it. Now it takes about 35 minutes for two of us to play and you can check that out in my playthrough video um, which I've made for it with a smile and a gun, well worth having a look at. 
and the rule book itself is really really clear and concise we didn't have any issues with it now replayability wise well because of the nature of this game yeah it's replayable um but i really like the addition of kind of the infusion cards and the shadow cards that really just add a little something extra every time you play thing four how does this game look and feel well, first thing to note is that I have a pre-production copy, so the finalised version is going to differ from what I have here. Although there is, you know, a lot to be admired in what I have. So I particularly like the size of the cards and the cardstock used. Um, they're all quite elegant and fitting. Um, I particularly like the iconography and the bits of artwork that you do get. There's not a lot of art in the game, but there is a ton of style. This is definitely a game with a clear vision and a focus. I actually think the artwork on the game board is pretty stellar. It looks very kind of MC Escher to me, um, especially with it all being black and white. Um, overall, this game is aesthetically pretty interesting. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, With a Smile and a Gun is a lovingly put together two player battle of wit style game against this backdrop of 1920s prohibition era mobsterness. Um, and it does remind me of other titles such as Santorini or Torres or maybe even Hannah Makoji where there is this push and pull between you and your opponent where you're spending your turn wondering you know what's good for me right now versus what's also good for my opponent and every action you perform or do not perform matters and affects them greatly. Um, I do find however that this title is a little less punishing than those mentioned. I love the fact that you don't have to win a zone to get an item. I also love the fact that when you tie in a zone, nobody wins. And I really, really enjoy the fact as well that victory points aren't everything, that those items actually really matter. They're not just throwaways. This game has an appeal kind of all of its own, and it's definitely kind of a fun and interesting one to play. What is unusual, however, is the inclusion of things like narcotics in the game and gambling. And I understand that these are appropriate to the era, but I think that puts this game in a little bit of a more adult market and um, maybe less aimed at families than you might have considered. Um, and apart from that, while I do enjoy this game, I'm not sure how compelling it is. I'm not sure what's the reason you would want to take it down to play it again and again. And I think the real answer for that is that you have to be really, really interested in this very specific type of puzzle. Do I think you should have with a smile and a gun in your collection? Well, if you're looking for something for two player only, that's strategic and interesting, that has you planning out your turns and taking down your foes, then this is a title you should totally be checking out. And don't forget folks, that with a smile and a gun hits Kickstarters on July the 14th. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about with a smile and a gun, please leave them in the comment box below. I'd really love to hear from you. And tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.